I want to start this teaching this morning with a quote by Eric Hoffer, E-R-I-C. I'm going to be doing teachings today. H-O-F-F-E-R, you can Google him. Eric, E-R-I-C, H-O-F-F-E-R. He said, in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth. I'm pausing so you can write it. In times of change, the learners, people that learn, will inherit the earth. While they learned, find themselves while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped, beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. I'm going to repeat it one more time. To deal with a world that no longer exists. Eric Hoffer said, in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Many parents are professionals in the old instead of being amateurs in the new. Many parents have begun this teaching now are professionals in the old instead of being amateurs in the new. They are beautifully decorated, beautifully equipped for a world that no longer exists. Only Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Many parents are existing in a world that no longer exists. This is how my father raised me. Times have changed. This is how we grew up. You are beautifully equipped for a world that no longer exists. Stop being a professional in the old and start being an amateur learning in the new. Some of you are here, maybe my age. You are my age bracket. You know how many times you have spoken to your children to help to teach you how to do something on your phone. My children will say, Mommy, you're just counting this thing. You're only doing text messages. Phone is more than that. You say how? So my last born says to me, Mommy, anytime anybody wants to do anything for you on the phone, don't let them do it. Let them to teach you. Yeah. So I will put my what go back, go back, go back to settings. Uh -huh. What? Because there's a new world that is in existence. You cannot afford to be a professional in the old. Yeah. You must learn to be an amateur in the new. Learning and learning and learning. That's why we're here this morning. And I'm going to be shattering some tables under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Parenting, number one, is a privilege. A huge privilege. A great privilege. One woman, she's Ghanaian, came visiting one day many years ago and said to me, woman of God, please pray. That's how we even have a child. Let me, just, let me just be pregnant. Let the child be born in the morning, even if the child will die at 6 p.m. I'm quoting her. She was so desperate. And here you are doing family planning. Here you are saying, it's not only guys I have, it's only boys I have. It is a great privilege in one of my meetings, one woman said to me, Ma, I came for your meeting, Mother's Summit, last year. I had done 14 IVFs that failed. You know how much IVF is? You know the pains? 
The injections? She said, at a point, my doctor said to me, Madam, must you have a child? The doctor told her. She said, at a point during the meeting, you said you were led to hug everyone, trusting God for the blessing of the womb. I hugged. This is the baby. She named the child after me, baby girl in Lagos. It's a privilege to be a parent. That's the first thing I want to drive home today. It is a privilege to be a father or to be a mother. Number two, it is a massive trust given by God. For a child to be sent to you to take care of. Remember in Exodus chapter 2, Pharaoh's daughter said to Moses' mother, take care of this child and I will pay you your wages. That's the same thing God did by giving us children, boys, girls. God is impliedly saying, take care of these children and I will pay your wages. We have grown in a culture that says, the child must take care of me. Do you know how much I paid as your school fees? Do you know? Mm -mm. Biblically, a righteous man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. I don't want us to live and end our lives the way our parents and our grandparents lived until you have sent 10,000 naira airtime. They couldn't survive. Live your life in such a way that your evening and your night will not be dependent on your children. Let's change the trajectory. Remember the first quote. When your child has one million dollars today, can I shock you, sir and ma? You are not the first person the child will think about. So stop putting pressure on them. You are not taking care of me. Do you see how much you did your responsibility by sending them to school? Live your life in such a way that if your child gives you one hundred thousand dollars, the child will feel privileged. Not because you need it, but because some blessings are not said, they are provoked. Yeah. Yeah. Genesis 27, beginning from verse 27. Give me venison, that's my soul, not my mouth. My soul. Some blessings come from the mouth, some from the soul. So when your child brings that money, the child is saying, I want to provoke something from your soul. It's a questioning generation. It looks like a confused generation. But we need to understand this generation. Otherwise, we will lose them. Many pastors have lost their children. Be careful, think and pray before you send your child abroad. You may not like what I'm saying, but I've traveled enough. I've seen these children, particularly if the child is young. And you, will not, you don't have the visa to be seeing that child, maybe once a month or once every two months. Please. I recommend that your child finishes maybe first degree. There's what you call inter native intelligence. There's what you call native intelligence. There's too much freedom in those countries. You cannot beat your child. One day I had forgotten you know, we were in America with my child. I said to her, I will beat you, police will deport both of us. <laughs> I'll show you that I'm an African woman. I told you to come out, let's go out. You said you are not going because I rebuked you. <sighs> America, Lama, one, two, two, it's true. I had to calm down a bit. You can't do that if the child calls police and I'm psychologically stressed. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I say my mom is so cool. Before you know it, ground police is here. This child called. I'm okay. You called. The child is suddenly like this. Mom, you stressed me. Please. Your child may not even finish a first, a first degree, but let your child have native intelligence. Let your child be able to withstand what is there. A lot is there. I don't, 
I had, I don't want to mention the country, that now they give 12 year old, 40 year old after pill. What do you call it? That the child can have sex without the consent of the parent. When she gets to school, all she needs to do is tell the teacher, I had sex yesterday. And the child, the teacher is permitted under law to give her after, what do you call it? You see that I don't even know the name. <laughs> without your consent. Please, I know you have the funds. I know you have the money, but that's not what we're talking about here. If you cannot, <laughs> I beg. This generation, they are battling too many things. The devil is interested. Peers, children that have been waiting. I see them in my class, 16 year old. I see some things and I'm wondering, where, where are your parents? Who sent you to this school? And you will know it's not their fault. No native intelligence. Africa, we are blessed. We are blessed. We should clap for Africa there, honestly. <laughs> this generation is not taking the traditional answers. This generation lives inside technology. You must know your child. And there's no way you can know your child if you don't spend time with your child. Number two, you must love your child. And show the child that he or she is loved. Don't compare your children. That a child does not understand mathematics does not make that child a failure. It may be good in other things. Encourage that thing. Number three, train your child. Give your children, number one, spiritual values. Number two, economic values. This is how to save. This is how to give to God. This is how to spend money. Number three, give your children societal values. Honor people. This is how to behave. When the traffic light says stop, stop. When you see someone in, in uniform, they are representing the government. Give your children societal values. There are some people you don't stand to greet. Every relationship has a posture. Know your mates. The church is a family. We have the father figure, the mother figure. We have the colleagues, the brethren, the siblings. It's a family. Know your mates. Know your equal. Know your junior. You need time to put these in your children. It's not just the mother. The fathers too must create time. You may not have quantity time, but you must have quality time with your children. We were at the family function sometimes ago, and daddy was saying, so say whatever you, you are free now to say. One of them said, ah, mommy's hand. Very fast. <laughs> Daddy will explain why he wants to beat you. Me, I don't have that patience. Explain what? You don't know why you are, I want to beat you. <laughs> ah, I was looking for, even as I was looking at that boy that was saying, Mommy's hand is, my husband said, Nobody should look at anybody anyhow. <laughs> I said, I wish this was 15 years ago. <laughs> you would not have said this. Suddenly, self-defense, I just said, is your life not good like that now because I... <laughs> Let's see. Train your children. Before, pray for your child. Pray for your child. Carry your children before God. Pray for them. Begin to use prayers to manage their lives and tie them and give seeds on the altar. So sometimes I'm in the place of prayers. I still did this when the Father, remember my sacrifices on behalf of my children. You remember how many children I'm helping, Lord, as we speak? My child. Baba, look at that area. Baba, look at this. One day the Lord said to me, Many things are speaking on your behalf on the altar. Is your altar empty? What is speaking for you on the altar of God? Thou coverest my head in the days of battle. That means there are days of battle. Right. Revelations chapter 12. When the evil cannot get you, he tries to get your seed. Yeah. You may not be able to fight. That time you may be weak, but put something on the altar. The heaven will be remembering. Bless other children. Help them. You don't need to found an orphanage. Sold to an orphanage. Sometimes I tell God, Father... Look at the way I treat. When the government came to inspect my orphanage, they said, 
if all of our energies were like this, they hadn't, I wasn't even there, they asked myself, are these her biological children? Because they don't, they're not dressed like orphanage children. And I use it, Father, look at the way I treat these children in the orphanage. Lord, look at what I do for lepers. Lord, look at the widows that are praying for me. Lord, look, it's scriptural. Genesis chapter, beg your pardon, Acts chapter 10. Dorcas and Cornelius, there are things speaking before the Lord. My mission is accomplished here. Lord.